it's a different vibe this year because Lisa's next book is called Immortal Guitars. And we're focusing on the immortality of the instrument. So we're going to ask you one question. Yeah. If you could travel back through time to the history of rock and roll, and you could land somewhere and hold in your hand one guitar that represents a piece of music, an artist, an era, whatever. If you could get that one guitar in your hand and play it, what guitar would that be? Wow, that's tough. That's a tough, tough question. It would probably, let's see. I mean, it might have something to do with the Beatles. But now I'm thinking Stones, I'm thinking of some of Keith's guitars, and wow, that's really tough. Maybe that old, like, I think it was like a J45 that John Lennon used to play, maybe. I just like photographed that. his J160E bedded guitar. That, that's probably the one I'm thinking about. Well, the one that when he and Yoko were in the hotel room in Amsterdam right. and in Montreal, and he, yep. he actually hand drew the little caricature of them on the wow. front of the guitar. That one's in the next book. That's, that's yeah, that's a good place to start. <laughs> my, mom, my mom actually bought that guitar for my dad when I was about four years old. Really? And I still have it to this day. And I just photographed, I just purchased the Terry O'Neill photograph. You know, he just passed away, Terry O'Neill, iconic photographer. He's got this shot of the Beatles, and there's John holding that exact guitar. So it's such an honor to include that in the next yeah. book. It's an immortalized. It's, it's an honor, honor to be in the same see, room. See, the men the men are mortal, but the axes, they're immortal. Yeah. And it, what music came out of that John Lennon guitar? What songs take you back to when you were so young and you go, that's what I'm going to do? Oh, man. I mean, that stuff was like... What albums? It was... Uh, I have three older sisters, okay. so in the late 60s, that was going on, yeah. you know, and I mean, they were a couple of years older than me, especially my older sister, Mary, she was like totally into the Beatles, so I grew up with all that stuff playing around the house, uh -huh. you know? um, for some reason, first thing that comes to mind right now is just like eight days a week just pops into my head, because there's like just a strumming in the back. Yeah. 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 Ooh, I need your love, babe. I guess you know it's true. Hope you need my love, babe. Just like I need you. Oh, hold me. Love me. Hold me. Hold me. I just wanted to get to the chorus. I have a mic <laughs> on stage, but they don't turn it on. They don't turn it on. No, no. You, you were never given that privilege. Well, I'm like, I'm like the singer who plays guitar. They don't, they never turn his guitar on, you know. That's right. The guitar There's a player distinction. tries to sing. <laughs> exactly. Yep. But you, you described it perfectly. I know a lot come to mind because it has to do with inspiration. Yes. Uh, and, and, and also, other guitars are flying through my head, but you know, it's. Everything goes back to the Beatles for me. Yes, so, me too. so it would have to be somewhere like that. And of course, you know, I mean, think about, uh, think about uh, Harrison, Paul, Paul McCartney's, and the bass, his Hofner, that Hofner yeah, the Hofner bass, bass. You know, the only one he's ever played. It's just crazy the history behind that, right and like the fact that it exists. If you're in a room with it, you're like, yeah. wow, yeah, come yeah. together. Yeah. 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 You know what? You know what? Uh, I always point this out when I talk about Paul McCartney's bass play. Uh, at the end, the vamp at the end of uh, "As My Guitar Gently Weeps." Yeah. You know, which is I mean, the every, Clapton every, solo. Every, everybody's here in Clapton. Yeah. But listen to but, but, yes. the bass. Yes. Listen to what he's doing back there. Yes. It's, it's just awesome, and the tone it's coming out of. It's well, the White Album was bang. the most experimental record of its that time. Record. That, record that was the late so '60s experimentation. Take it to yeah, levels. I mean, that, that's that's like my go-to <laughs> Beatles record in uh, yeah. Revolvers. Yeah, yeah Revolvers. Love Revolver. Of course. Yep. Take off your mind, relax, and float down oh, yeah. the street. Yeah. Break out your sitar, man. Yep. I was recently in Texas and was able to hook up with Rita Haiti and photographed the dime Mac Darrell, Dean from Hell guitar. The, the Dean from Hell is have the Dean a, from have Hell. Have you got a dime bag story? Well, I've, I've, I've had my hands on that guitar a number of times and I just think it was 1992, uh, 93 or 94, uh, Skid Row brought Pantera out on tour uh, with us and 
it was uh, it was it was mayhem. You know, we thought we could party until we got yeah. in a room with those. I guys. I saw the show. You were there in Denver. You lived it in Denver. You almost didn't live it. That's the night I took Chris Cornell back to his hotel with a fan because he didn't want to hang out. So we found a fan in the parking lot to drive us home. It's always good for a ride home. But that night, oh my God, the encore. Pulling the joint out on stage. Oh yeah, that's right. They used to do this giant joint. You know? <laughs> Philip and Sebastian. Yep, yep. Oh my God. Anyway, well, talk about the no, dive guitar. Well, yeah, Dime was, uh, as we all know, Dime was great. Um, and you know, it's, it's sad to be talking about him in the past tense, but you know, back in those days, it was just uh, it was a lot of camaraderie and all of that. And um, he was very casual about things. And I would I would go out and watch their set every night before we played because there's no better way to get ready for a show than to sit there yeah. on the side of the stage and watch, watch Pantera. Yeah. And they did like at the end of one of the songs, they did like a little purple haze thing. And every once in a while. He'd come over and hand me that bean, and I'd come out and finish that thing, you know? Which was, even back then, yeah. it was just like, oh, being on stage with these guys is great. Yeah. But uh, He, he was, would hand you the Dean from Hell? Yeah. yeah. And, you'd, and you'd, do the, you'd yeah. finish it off? Yeah. you finish yeah. it off. Oh, from cool. time to time, probably four or five times we did that, you know? But it was just, he was just casual and spontaneous. And it was just like, oh, we're just a couple guys at work, you know? And you know what's interesting off. is I met you on the, the KISS tour, the yeah, first final 2000. tour. And Dime and Rita were huge KISS fans. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So if you look at the image of his guitar, when I went to the house, he has two KISS pinball machines. I uh -huh. mean, the house is a, is a shrine so, to yeah, KISS. Yeah. And so I photographed the guitar like, on top uh, of it. Like, uh, uh, it's, it's like you know, a teenager's bedroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. It is, and yep. he also has a... Is it a Hamer Les Paul body that he called the Cherry Bomb? Oh, really? That he got the idea from Ace Freely. I don't remember that one. Yeah. No? Uh, I'll, I'll have to show you the photograph of it, but it's Great. got like a Cherry Bomb trick where, you know, it smokes. Yeah, yeah. Inspired yep. by Ace. The Smoker. The Smoker. Yep. That's right. Lisa's that doing her, that day she's doing her part guitar. for the immortality of the guitar. This woman does her part. Capturing the essence of these instruments. The fact that my guitar is in that in the first book is like, I love it. I love it. I'm just like, I was just, as a matter of fact, I was just bragging about it to somebody because some guy bro broke out some pictures from the old days, and he had a picture of that guitar when it was new. The Roughnecker. Yes, and it had to be like right when I got it because it was, the top was bright. It was a bright, like nice, light coffee brown, and the only thing on there was some Sharpie that I... I, I scribbled on it, but uh, <laughs> it was, I was like, wow, that guitar is in a book, man. It's in 108 Rockstar's guitar. It's been guitars. immortalized. Yep. It's been, a, yep. it's been it immortalized. already when you got it? Uh, what, the back of the neck and all that? Well, the front even. I mean. Yeah, no, I got, when I got it, it had no finish. Okay. But it was a nice, smooth, beautiful piece of mahogany. And, you know, and then now it's what we have in the book. It's got you know? the wear and tear it, on it now. It doesn't see any now it's action. it's got life on it. Well, yeah, yeah, it's got life, it's got <laughs> blood and sex and, and <laughs> yes. booze and got those And a whole lot of Scotty Hill. Yes. And a whole lot of Scotty. Yes. Thank you, Scotty. Thanks, guys. Thanks for All coming right, over. Thank we you. We love you.